said the royal sorcerer to Hatshepsut, with this amulet, you and your descendants are endowed by the goddess Isis with the powers of the animals and the elements. You will soar as the falcon soars, run with the speed of gazelles, and command the elements of sky and earth. 3,000 years later, a young science teacher dug up this lost treasure and found she was heir to the secrets of Isis. And so, unknown to even her closest friends, Rick Mason and Cindy Lee, she became a dual person, Andrea Thomas, teacher. Oh, mighty Isis. And Isis, dedicated foe of evil, defender of the weak, champion of truth and justice. go bird watching than play tennis with me? Ridiculous, isn't it? Well, I can't blame you if you'd rather face an eagle than my blazing serve. I know I should be horsewhipped for reminding you, but the last time I faced your blazing serve, you lost six to nothing. It was just a fluke. Besides, I won't let that happen again. I've been practicing. Since yesterday? Nance, let's go. Go? Go where? Willie Beacon says he spotted an eagle's nest up on Rocky Point. An eagle's nest on Rocky's Point? I refuse to believe it. I know, this isn't eagle territory. But if it's true, I want to get a picture before anybody else does. OK, but I don't believe it. There. There it is. Hey, I bet it is an eagle's nest. That's it, all right. Looks like there might be some eggs in it. What a picture that's going to make. Did you bring your telephoto lens? Nah, I won't need it. I'll go down there to take the shot. That is a bit dangerous. What kind of dangerous? We took up mountain climbing for just this kind of thing, didn't we? Yeah, but mountain climbing's different. You come prepared. You do bring the right equipment. Now, would the old master come unprepared? You got to have more faith in me, Nance. Voila! That's French for look what I got. You're not going down on that. I was so afraid I wouldn't use it to tie a Christmas present. It's plenty safe for one oh. more trip. Look at that, like a steel cable. Oh, please, Steve. I really wish you wouldn't. It'll be all right, you'll see. You just keep an eye out for Mama Eagle and let me know if she comes back. Be careful.
of rope which were undone come together now as one. happened if you hadn't come along. I do. And it wouldn't be a very pleasant thought. For a young man who's supposed to be familiar with mountain climbing equipment, using that sort of thing is unforgivable. I'm sorry, Isis. It won't happen again. And I'll make sure it doesn't. Good. I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle. Say it, Tut. I'm an eagle. What are you teaching him, Cindy? It's an experiment. I'm trying to build Tut's ego to the point where he thinks he's an eagle. He already believes he's an eagle. That's his problem. Is everything put away? Everything's put away. Then we can go. Is Mr. Mason coming by to pick you up? No. Today is his day to coach the scuba diving class. In that case, how about a sandwich on the way home? That is a spectacular idea. I'm starved. And I'll buy. Thank you. Hi, girls. Everybody put your gear down and we'll talk a bit over here. He gives us that safety lecture one more time, I swear. Come on, Steve. He's only doing it for any good. I know, I know, but I'm getting tired of the routine. We've heard it a million times. Safety, safety, safety. Okay, everybody listen and listen carefully. I know you've heard this all before, but you're going to hear it again and often. The name of the game is safety. What'd I tell you? Shh. No, there is no margin for error. The first mistake you make could very well be your last. Now, we were lucky today. There were mistakes made, but none of them were fatal. You, Steve, you're number one. Me? Yes, you. You came all the way up from 12 feet without exhaling once. Well, heck, Mr. Mason, it was only 12 feet. Look at me, I'm OK. Sure you are this time. But next time, you may not be. Now, I've warned you that six feet is a danger point. It's very possible to get an air embolism on the way to the surface if you don't breathe. Now, you have a tank. Use it. Yes, sir. All right, now, everybody else, the first cardinal rule of diving is that you never dive without a partner, OK? You never dive without a partner. Man, he's getting to be a real old lady with these rules. Would you stop that? You've caused more than enough trouble as it is. Put on exactly the same amount of plain water as you have oil. Which proves that water is heavier than oil and why we would see oil floating on the surface of water. Right. How was your scuba diving class? All right, except for a problem. What's up? Steve Conrad. I'm thinking of dropping him from the club. Isn't he a good diver, Mr. Mason? He's careless and impatient, and those traits just aren't good for a scuba diver. You're right. He has to be taught to control his impatience and not be careless. That's a pretty big job you're talking about. Well, it's certainly worth the effort. Steve is potentially a very valuable human being. He's studying to be an environmentalist. He's interested in endangered species of all kinds, and he's a very personable young man that... Andrea, Steve is an endangered species. And if he doesn't quit being so careless and impatient, he's going to become extinct. I agree. So do I. So do I. All right. You're awful close to getting thrown out of the scuba diving club. Kidding. What did he do? Mr. Mason thinks you're too careless, too impatient, just too dangerous for yourself. Well, uh, Mr. Mason worries too much. That stunt at Rocky Point didn't help any. It was an accident. Sure, but it's the kind of accident that happens only to you, not to other people. Come on, Cindy. 
Look, I've earned my brownie points by warning you. It's your baby now. See you later. Thanks, Cindy. Oh, come on. You're not going to let Mother Mason's nitpicking bother you, are you? Yes, because he's not all wrong. I mean, sometimes you scare me half to death, the way you jump into things without even thinking. You mean that Rocky Point business again? It could have happened to anybody. But it didn't. And like Cindy says, it happened to you. And maybe the next time it happens, Isis won't be there to help you. Tell you what, why don't we wait and see if I get into real trouble again? We'll find out, okay? Okay. Hi, Miss Thomas. Hi, Cindy. I have a confession to make. Oh? I just ran into Steve and Nancy. And you told Steve everything Mr. Mason had to say. How did you know that? Why else would you look so guilty? Did I do the wrong thing? No, you did the right thing. I think Mr. Mason will agree. I just hope Steve thinks so, too. Masks and fins. Uh, weight belt secure. OK, everybody check your regulators. Steve, is all of your equipment working properly? Yes, sir, I think so. I don't care what you think. I want you to know that everything is working properly. Now, you go back and recheck every piece of equipment. When you know it's working perfectly, you recheck it again, you understand? Yes, sir. Check, double check, triple check. Right. OK, everybody, let's go. Pair up. We might as well get wet. What about me, Mr. Mason? Nancy isn't here yet. I'm sorry, Steve. You know the rules. No diving without a partner. You'll just have to wait until she can join us. OK, everybody, let's go. What Cindy says, you're not an eagle. You're not even bald enough to be an eagle. I'm not even sure you're really a bird. I'm an eagle. I missed the dive. I'm afraid you did. Where's Steve? I don't know. Why? Because I told him to wait here for you. You don't think he could have gone down all by himself? It looks that way. Everybody, check your tanks. We're going in again. Nancy, I'm sure everything is all right, but just to be on the safe side and have a backup, will you notify the lake patrol? Yes, sir. OK. OK. Let's go. Everybody in. <laughs>
I'm going to get help. Hurry, Nancy. Mighty Isis. so there's nothing left for us to do but wait. Hope that Steve isn't in any trouble. Rick! Isis, your timing's perfect. Steve's under the water alone. We can't find him. I know it. Give me your tank. There's not much air left in it. Let's hope we won't need much. She's got it. Steve, are you all right? Fine. Fine, Mr. Mason. I don't know what to say, Isis, except thanks again. Thanks is enough, Rick. I'm just glad I got to him in time. I'll guarantee you one thing. You won't have to do it again. Don't be too hasty with him, Rick. She took my tank and, without putting it on, jumped in. Well, to make a long story short, thanks to Isis, Steve is still with us. I think Nancy feels worse than Steve. Hello. It's Thomas. You missed everything. Steve was trapped underwater and Isis saved him. Is he all right? Oh, he's fine now. Oh, he's fine. But he won't be fine when I kick him out of the club. Oh, Mr. Mason. Oh, Mr. Mason. Steve is such a nice guy but this was the worst and final stunt. He looks pretty scared to me. Look, me too. If it hadn't been for Isis, I'd have Steve on my conscience for the rest of my life. I mean, he's through, that's it, no thanks. At least have a talk with him. All right, I'll talk with him, but it won't do any good because he's out of the club, period. <laughs> Steve, I have something I want to say to you. Well, I'll bet you do, Mr. Mason. I have something to say to you, too. Oh? Is it okay if I go first before I lose my nerve? Okay, go ahead. Mr. Mason, you know all those safety rules you kept pounding at us over and over again? Make sure, don't take chances, double check. Well, I used to think you were just being an old lady about it. But I gotta tell you, from now on, compared to me, you're gonna look like some kind of a daredevil. Whatever you do to me, Mr. Mason, this is one lesson I'm never going to forget. Well, I'll tell you what, Steve. As long as it never happens again, I won't kick you out of the club. I will put you on suspension for the rest of the month and probation for the remainder of the year, though. Thanks a lot, Mr. Mason. You won't be sorry. OK, Steve. What was this out-of-the-club business, period? Well, I think he had a pretty good scare and learned a lesson. 
Besides, I don't expect any more trouble out of Steve. What are you two smirking about? I'm not smirking, Mr. Mason. Neither am I. Women. hour after these messages. We've all heard the expression safety first, but sometimes we forget just how important that saying is. Safety first means nothing is more important than being sure you think before you act. So don't take a chance. Think safety and act safely. See you next week.